Hello Travelers, Boardman21 here, and today I have the 1 to 76 Falconer leveling guide for you. This one will start off using Flurry. It can feel a bit slower in the early game, but by mid-game, once you start unlocking more skills like the Falcon, and then getting Aerial Assault and Dive Bomb towards the middle of the game, and then into the early end game, the damage really starts to take off. Of course, once you get to Dive Bomb and you have all the Falcon skills, that's when the most damage is going to start apply, allowing you to start speed running like you can see in the gameplay right now where you constantly have dive bomb aerial assault and falcon strikes constantly going off letting your falcon do a ton of damage to all of the enemies the falcon scales super well with all of your damage so again once you start scaling into it into the middle and end early game you're going to absolutely just start speed running through the game like all my other leveling guides, in the description below you'll find timestamps at all the level points where I put in the passives and skill points showing you exactly what I did when I did it. Again, leveled this live on stream, it did take a few days due to some server instability, but it's finally done and we have it. So with all that in mind, let's go ahead and jump into it and get started. Alright travelers, we are now level 4, which means we get to specialize our first skill, but first for the character sheet. The main thing you're going to want in this area, if you can get some fire res or physical res, that's huge, and then the next couple of chapters void is also what you're going to want to go for so get some fire some physical and some void res for skills we get to specialize our first skill we're going to go flurry and with flurry we really want to get up here and start getting that health gain on hit we are in hardcore so getting that health back every time we do a hit will be really big for us so one point in alacrity as we work our way up and then for passives two points both of them going into swift assassin for that attack speed and physical damage so we can kill our enemies faster and then, of course, inside of the inventory here, if you can find some health on melee hit, that's the biggest thing that we want right now. You can also play from range with a bow, but we're going to be going melee for now. And then in all the other slots, just get as much health and resistance as you can. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 8 when we spec into our second skill. Alright travelers, we are now level 8. At this point, we do have some physical resist and fire resist for the first area. Again, for chapter 1, physical and fire kind of the main thing you want. Going to chapter 2 and 3, you want physical and void resist, so work on those first. For passives, we got six more points. We're going to throw two more in Swift Assassin for that attack speed and physical damage. One point into Guile, which will give us some dodge rating, but this does unlock evasion. And then we're going to throw three points in there so that while we're moving, we have increased dodge rating or, and we take reduced damage. We get the increased dodge rating all the time and then the reduced damage taken while moving, which means that when you're running, you'll be able to take a lot less damage from hits. It just increases your survivability. Once we have the Falcon, it'll be really, really nice. Then for skills, we got three more points for Flurry. Again, we want that health gain on hits, so two points into Blood Reverly for that leech, and then one point into Second Wind for that health gain on hit. At this point, you can use a bow or a melee weapon. You're going to get health back either way, so however you want to play it, you can. And then for the second skill, we're going Smoke Bomb, and for Smoke Bomb, first thing we're going to go into is Shrouded in Darkness for that Glancing Blow chance and Dodge Rating per stack of Dust Shroud that we get, and you get that while being in the cloud. After that, we'll start working into getting extra damage and leech out of it. And then for the inventory, I'm wearing a one-handed weapon and shield right now. Again, we're in hardcore. For everything else, just get the resistances that you need. And again, if you want to switch to a bow, you can go ahead and go for it. For the weapon, start looking for that health on melee hit to really increase your survivability. If you get it on a two-handed weapon, you won't need the shield because you'll get so much life back on hit. But that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 13 or 14 when we throw in some more points.
Alright, Travelers, we are now level 15. Time to put in some more points into our skills and passes. But first, the character sheet. Again, we're now in Chapter 2. Void Resist and Physical Resist are the main ones that you want. For skills, we got two more points for Flurry. I already threw one into Second Win. The last point, I'm going to go ahead and throw into Alacrity. We're going to get close to that channeling. Once you channel, you'll be doing a lot more damage with it. But when you do channel, you're also going to want a point to get mana back. Otherwise, you won't be able to sustain for very long. And then for Smoke Bomb, we got five more points. Going to go ahead and throw two into Lingering Fumes, and then three of them into Smoke Blades. This will give you a ton more melee damage. If you're using a bow attack like we are, it's not going to give you a damage boost because you won't go any flat bow damage. However, if you switch back to a two-handed weapon and you're just in the Smoke Bomb, you'll get a ton of extra damage from that, which is what I'll be doing until I get the Explosive Trap. And then for passives, we got 11 more points. We're going to throw two more into Evasion, then five of them into Dodge and Parry for all that glancing blow. And then at this point, if you want mana back, you can use Sapping Strikes, but we'll be channeling Flurry so you won't be using it as a zero-costing skill. So for us, we're going to throw the last four into Swift Assassin for more physical damage and more attack speed to kill things even faster. And then for the inventory, again, right now you can do bow attacks. Like I said, I'm going to switch back to a two-hander now that I have all that extra attack speed and flat damage and smoke bomb boosting it so our single target will be much better and then for everything else just get your void physical resist extra health resistances as you need and that'll be it for this update i'll see you guys at level 20 when we spec into our third skill which will be the falcon Alright Travelers, we are now level 20, which means we get to spec into our third skill, which will be the Falcon itself. But first the character sheet, again in this area, physical and void resist are the two main things you really want to go for. For skills, we got two more points for Flurry. We're going to throw another one into Alacrity and then one into Boundless Blow so that we can channel it much faster. This will use mana, so the very next point you get, you're going to want to go with Sap Willpower so that you can channel it almost forever. The one point here should give you enough mana to sustain that as long as you're hitting an enemy, you'll get lots of mana back. For Smoke Bomb, we got one more point. Going to continue to put into Smoke Blades for that melee damage which is being given to us and our Falcon when we're inside of the Smoke Bomb area, which is going to really boost the Falcon's damage. Great for single target. And then for the third skill, now that we have the Falcon unlocked when we chose the Mastery, we're going to spec into him. We have four points. The first one, you want Falconer's Journey. This will instantly give the Falcon a bunch of damage. We're level 20, so he instantly gets 20% more damage just based on our level, and then he also gets 1% more damage per point of dex. And then for the other three points, we're going to throw one into side by side so that when you directly use a melee skill, or any skill really, he's going to reduce a portion of the remaining cooldown for us. That's going to be Flurry that we keep using over and over again. Then one point in Trained to Hunt will give our highest increased damage to the Falcon. We'll be scaling a lot of melee damage. Later it will be bow damage. But 
for us, it's going to be that this, this it doesn't matter which one that you scale up. If you do bow damage or you do melee damage for the falcon, it all gets converted to just falcon damage. So whatever attack he's doing, it all boosts him. And then that last point we have, and to go for the eyes so that our highest crit chance is also affecting the falcon, which will give the falcon more crit chance as well. So all three of these will allow to boost as you get your own stats in the game, which is really nice. And then for passives, six points. We have to put one more in the rogue. You have to have 20 points in here before you can move on to the other mastery. So we're going to go ahead and throw it into steady hand for the health and dex there. And then we're going to throw the last five points all into the falconer, which is our mastery class, and all five going into handler. This will give our minion 35% more damage as well as 5% base crit, which will be really nice for him and allow him to do more damage. And then for the inventory, again, two-handed weapon you can do. We're doing it with health on hit. You can also start to run a bow at this point if you want. Either way it works. For us, I just like that health on melee hit as a little extra bonus to survivability in hardcore. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 28 when we spec in some more points. Alright Travelers, it's only been three levels, but we're going to throw in some more points and we're going to swap out Smoke Bomb in order to start specking into Explosive Trap because we only use Smoke Bomb on single target and we can get some damage out of Explosive Trap anyways. So it's a good time to make the swap and then we'll go into Smoke Bomb later in the game. But for now, for the character sheet, again, Void Resist, Physical Resist, the main things that you want at this point. For skills, we got two more points for Flurry. We want one in this mana back and then we're going to go ahead and throw one into the health game so that we get mana back with it so our mana will stay full. We'll get as much health back whether we're using a bow or a weapon, which is nice, and we're channeling to get as much damage out as quick as possible. For Smoke Bomb, we're going to go ahead and despecialize this and then spec into Explosive Trap. For Explosive Trap, there's two things that you want to go for. You want to get up here and get to Blast Rain to convert it to a bow, and then you also want to get down here for Sky Signal and for Free Lofting Birds so that we get the cooldown recovery and give our Falconer Elemental Penetration, or in our case, Physical Penetration, uh, every time that we have a trap go off, which is what you're throwing. It's just a bunch of traps, so they'll be going off all the time. So for the first five points, we're going to throw two into Minefield, one into Joker's Blueprint, one into Sky Signal, and then one into Free Lofting Bird. Now, the reason that I have an extra point here, which you won't have, is because I have the Kestrel, which we had dropped for us. This gives plus one to deck skills, which all those skills are. If you don't have that last point, again, this is just what we're working towards. So you won't be able to put one in here for the recovery of the Falcon Seals, which at this point is only going to be the Falcon Strikes. But don't worry about that. It's not too big of a deal. You'll unlock it as we work towards Blast Rain as well. And then for the Falcon Tree, I've got three points. You will only have two unless you have that chest as well. We're going to go ahead and throw one point into Exposed Weakness, and then two points into Is It a Bird for that Falcon Falcon damage, which is tripled for our Falcon Strikes. And then for passives, we got five points. We're going to throw one into Wilderness Scout, and then four of them into Outlander's Tenacity for all that dodge rating, and then our maximum health will also be gained as Endurance Threshold, and the Endurance Threshold, of course, when you hit that, you get additional DR, which is really good, especially for protecting you against one-shots, which in Hardcore, you really don't want to get hit by. And this will help save you from getting as many of those. And then for the inventory, Again, here, these uniques are not required. The Bleeding Heart in Endgame, you're really going to want for Leech, but we just happen to find it. Again, this is the very first character that we created on the cycle, so we've had some really good drops so far. Not mandatory, but they're nice to have. For everything else, just get as much resistance and health as you can. And then for the weapon, again, if you're doing a sword, get health on melee hit. If you're running a bow, just get as much flat damage and attack speed as you can. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at the next one around level 29.
All right, travelers, we're level 27. Now we're going to throw some more points into our skills and our passives. The next update will be at 35 when we get access to our fourth skill, which we'll be doing aerial assault at that point. But for now, we want to turn explosive trap into a bow. So we're going to do an update for the character sheet. Again, chapter four now, physical resist and necrotic resist are really the two main things that you really want to get. So make sure that you get those if you're having any trouble surviving for passives. We've got four more points. We're going to cap out the outlander's tenacity for that maximum health gained as endurance. Then one point and ranger's mark is all you need to have a chance to buff the falcon with plus one melee damage every time you use a bow attack and um, at least hit an enemy with it um, it's any hit that you do with it so if you use a bow attack and get like 25 hits you have a good chance to do a whole bunch of procs for your falcon giving them a bunch of damage and then the last two points, we're going to throw both of them into Raptor's Wings for this chance to gain haste on hit, more damage while we have haste, but this also increases the Falcon's melee attack speed. And then it's going to be a while, but eventually we'll get up here to Aerial Assault, which will be shortly after level 35. For the skills, we got one more point for Flurry. For here, we're going to go ahead and put it into Relentless for that attack speed so that we can attack faster with it. Eventually, we'll get rid of Flurry and go back into Smoke Bomb, but for now, we're going to keep using it as our DPS and our mana generator. Explosive Trap will be expensive to begin with. So we got four points with it. We're going to go ahead and throw two into Clustered Explosives, one point into Blast Rain so that you will now have the traps actually rain down and it will be a bow attack, which will be really nice and helpful. And then again, at this point, it's very expensive, so we want to start reducing the mana cost. So we're going to go ahead and go with one point in Subble Sabotage. We're going to cap this out and cap out the blueprint before you're really going to be able to get that mana cost low enough to where you won't need Flurry. And we can go back into Smoke Bomb. And then for the Falcon, three more points. We're going to go with one into Falconer's Mark. So that Falcon Strikes has a chance to mark enemies now with a 50% chance. And then when you hit a marked enemy, you'll get a buff out of it up here. So we have one point in marking strikes as well. So the Falcon has a 20% chance on non-Falcon Strike hits. So that'll be all of its normal hits. And then one point in Avian Arsenal so that... When we consume the Falconer's Mark that the Falcon has applied to enemies, which we will do with Explosive Trap or any hit that we do, we then give 10% of our character damage to the Falcon, and that is going to be flat damage converted over to melee damage for the Falcon. So on our bow, for instance, for this we have 24 flat bow, we also have 5 uh, bow physical on the weapon, that's 29 total, he'll get 10% of that. So every time that we proc that Falconer's Mark right now, he'll get 3 flat damage from this. And we'll continue to scale that into the end game. And then for the inventory, all that we need here, we have a bow on. You want as much attack speed and bow flat damage as possible. For everything else, get that resistance, get as much health as you can. And then again, in this area, physical and necrotic resist. And that'll be it. I'll see you guys at level 35 when we spec into our fourth skill. Alright travelers, we're now level 35, which means we get to spec into our fourth skill, which is going to be specking back into Smoke Bomb for us to increase our defense and of course to give us some offense with all that flat damage. In this area, we're still in chapter 4 right now. Physical, Necrotic, and Poison, along with some Bleed, has kind of been the main thing. So Physical Resist is really the main thing that you want, and then get as much Necrotic as you can after that, and Poison helps as well, as some of the enemies do poison you. For skills, we got two more points for Flurry. We're going to go ahead and put one more into Sap Willpower so that we get additional mana gain with it. And then we're also going to put another point into Relentless for all of that attack speed, especially with the more hits that we do with it. For Explosive Trap, three more points. We're going to continue to build into the mana regen with it. So we want another point in Blueprint and then another point in Subble Sabotage. And then we're going to start building into having the ability with Sprinkler for an additional uh, drop chance for traps. So we'll lay down three traps every time we throw it and then there'll be a 10% chance that those traps could drop an additional trap 
which will really give even more traps, which then boosts the falcon and the cooldown of your free of all your falcon skills even better. And then for falcon tree, we got three more points. For this one, we're going to continue to build into his damage, so another point into Is It a Bird for all that Falcon Strike damage, which will really help us, and then continue to build into Avian Assault, so that when we're consuming those marks that he's putting out, he'll get a bigger portion of our flat damage, which will really boost his damage. And then for the fourth skill, we don't have access to Aerial Assault or Dive Bomb yet, so we're going to go ahead and go with Smoke Bomb. And for Smoke Bomb, we really want all those Dust Shrouds for our survivability. Two points in Lingering Fumes, and then two points in Smoke Blades for all that flat melee damage, which will really boost the bird's damage. We're using all of that melee for the Falcon. And then for passives, we got four more points. We've already thrown five points in two Draining Arrows. This will give you health back when you're using Explosive Traps with Blast Rain. We're going to cap that out for all that health gain. So I'll increase your bow attack speed for both Flurry and Explosive Traps. And then the last point back in the Falconer, we're going to continue to build into Raptor's Rings for all that Falcon increased melee attack speed, which will be really nice for him. And then next, we can give Tactician, which will give the Falcon even more flat melee damage as we work our way up towards Aerial Assault and Dive Bomb. And then for gear, on your weapon, flat bow physical damage, bow attack speed, health on kill really helps. For everything else, just get the resistances that you can. You can get Leech for your Implicit on the bow. You can have a Bleeding Heart on as well if you found one. And for sustain, at this point, you use potions and then just attack as fast as you can with bow attacks, which is both flurry and explosive trap, giving you health on every bow attack. But that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at 42 when we put in some more points into the passives and skills. Bum, bum, bum. All right, travelers, we're now level 48, and we have enough passives to unlock aerial assault, so we're going to make the change over to it again at this point. We are on the first timeline, so necrotic and physical are the two main damage types we're running into, so you definitely want to get those capped as fast as possible. And then we're also stacking a dex, which gives us more damage, as well as additional chance to dodge, which is really nice for us for your survivability. For skills, we have two more points for Flurry, but we're going to unspec this and actually put Aerial Assault in there. However, we'll do Aerial Assault after we put enough passive points in to unlock it. So for Explosive Trap, we got three points here. We're going to cap out the blueprint for that mana efficiency. This will reduce that cost from 13 down to 11, so you can spam it a bit more. And then we're going to throw one more point into the Sprinkler for a 20% chance for that extra trap to drop down instead of 10. For Falcon, we have two more points here. We're going to go ahead and spec both of them. You can do two things, I guess, if you really want at this point. You can guarantee the Falconer's Mark, which we're consuming, which is where I'm going to put them. Or you can do additional strikes with Falcon hits and give them more melee attack speed. This is great for single target damage. It just boosts it a bit more. But for us, we're going to do the marking strikes and then one more point into Falconer's Mark as well. And then later, we can spec into the Stamina. For Smoke Bomb, we're going to cap out the damage with Smoke Blades, so we now get 20 flat melee damage for our pet falcon for every second that it's in Smoke Cloud. And then we're also going to increase its duration to last longer, and then the last four points all onto Rapid Concealment, so we get even more Dust Shrouds while in it for that Glancing Blow chance as well as Dodge Rating. And then for our passive points, we're going to throw six into Tactician, now that our bird will have 18 more flat melee damage which will be really nice we're going to throw four points into blast radius this will increase dive bombs area which will be really nice for it as soon as we unlock it we're then going to throw five points into evasion tactics for the decks and the increased armor as well as the increased dodge rating and then one point into relentless talons so that you will gain health based on your decks we have we have 25 decks which we just got five more so we have 30 decks every time our falcon does a hit we will now gain back 30 health or this is actually per 3 decks, so sorry. We'll get 10 health back because we have 30 decks. It's reduced by 3. So every Falcon hit, once we get 3 points in here, it will give us health back. So 2 more points there. And then base, divide your decks by 3. Kind of confusing there. And you'll get that amount of flat health on gain from the Falcon hits for survivability. So we're going to want to build towards that. And then for the last skill, since we unlocked Aerial Assault... 
We now have six points for it. We're going to go ahead and do two things. We want the Feather Storm, so it does some AoE for us, which will help with leveling. So two points at Aviate Hunter to reduce the cooldown. Feather Storm for one point, and then we want this health recovered so that with one point in Skyward Swoop and two points in Healing Gust, we get 20% of our missing health recovered every time we use it. We can get that up to 50%, which will really help our survivability. And then for the inventory, again, we're just using a weapon with a quiver. Added bow damage is nice. Critical strike chance. Remember, you want to get to 100% bow crit chance. And then as much flat damage as possible. Attack speed really helps with getting explosive trap off faster. For everything else, get the health, get the resist you need. And for that extra leech, a bleeding heart is really, really nice. But that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level like 53 when we spec into Dive Bomb. All right, Travelers, we are now level 52, and I know we just did an update not too long ago, but we now have access to Dive Bomb, so we're going to go ahead and spec into that and really get the build popping off. Again, first timeline, Fall of the Outcast, Necrotic, and Physical Damage are the two types you're going to encounter most. I'm looking for that for the most on my gear. And then after that, Health and other resistances such as Critical Strike Avoidance and Dexterity for Dodge and such. For passives, we have four more points. We're going to go ahead and throw two more into the Relentless Talons. This will now give us health gain on Falcon hits based upon Dex. One point in connection so that both Falcon Strikes and Dive Bomb will be instacast so they will not interrupt us. And then the last point, we're going to go ahead and start building into Deflect and Weave for that Block Chance and Glancing Blow Chance. We're going to cap this out so all Block Chance becomes Glancing Blow Chance. And then we also gain health on both Block or Glancing Blow, or in our case, it's going to be on glancing blow which we will get 100% of once we really full min max the build for skills for aerial assault we took the point out of feather storm because feather storm makes it to where your falcon is going to be busy doing that and not actually attacking things and it was just really kind of hard to use that while trying to continue down the map because the feather storm just wasn't hitting very many enemies we just kind of bounced around them so we took that point out and then we really built into the bottom half here so cap out the healing gust for that missing health gained we're going to cap out the refreshing resolve for the mana that you're missing gained back the reduced cooldown for both falconry and dive bomb based on your maximum mana and then the last two points we have here reduced with, with avian hunter giving us more damage and of course the cooldown recovery so that our aerial assault has a 3.8 second cooldown but you're going to be spamming it almost every second when you're in battle and having the traps go off because all the cooldown is being reduced so much which is really nice you'll just kind of keep bouncing around for Explosive Trap, continue to build into the blueprint for that mana efficiency again, and your next points into Trap Sprinkler. For Falconer, no extra points here, we haven't gotten any. Same with Smoke Bomb. And then, of course, we're now going to access Dive Bomb with seven points here. We want to reduce the cooldown down to zero so it doesn't cost anything. So one point in Rush of the Hunt, and then three points in Focus Hunter. This will give it 12% more damage as well as reduce that mana cost down to zero, so it now costs zero. The last three points we want into Rushing Wings. This is, again gives it more damage multiplier, but also it's going to reduce the delay to the Falcon coming down. So as soon as you cast it, the Falcon will come down much faster, do its damage, and of course, will just feel better overall. And for our inventory, again, for the bow, everything is all the same. Get that bow flat damage, get to 100% crit as fast as you can, so get as much base crit as you can, and then res resistances everywhere else. But that'll be it. I'll see you guys at level 60 when we put in some more points into our passives and skills.
Alright travelers, we are now level 60, time to spec in some more points into our passives, our skills, but first the character sheet, again we're stacking as much dex as possible, all that dex is going to give your falcon more damage as well as give you additional dodge chance, which will really help with your survivability. For the uh, resistances, we're again going for necrotic and physical, at this point we're capping out those two, trying to work towards all of them, but again, we really want the necrotic and physical right now for the fall of the outcast timeline, we're about to take on that boss. For skills, we got three more points for Aerial Assault. We're going to go ahead and build into the Aerial Prowess so that we can get health back and increase the damage with our Aerial Assaults that we're doing, which is really nice. And we're doing it all the time, so we're going to go ahead and throw in one point here just to start getting stacks. Uh, or two points here to start getting the stacks. You can get up to 24 of those, which will give you a lot of health back as well as increased damage. And then one point into Falcon's Havoc will give us Haste and Frenzy afterwards too, which will be really nice. Then for Explosive Trap, we've got two more points here. We don't care about the maximum traps. We do want one more point in the Sprinkler for the 30% drop. If you're not having any mana issues, you can go into Automated Bombardment, but the mana cost is pretty ridiculous here. So after that, I'm gonna go ahead and start specking into the design just to give them a bigger detonation area. You can also play around with Impact Trigger if you want so they explode immediately, but I like leaving them on the ground and letting mobs run into them. But both of these are playable depending on how you wanna do it and how much mana regen that you have. For the Falconer, we got two more points. Gonna go ahead and throw both of them into the stamina here for the melee attack speed of our Falcon, as well as for additional Falcon strikes to get extra hits. For Smoke Bomb, two more points. We're gonna build into the armor shred, so one in thick smoke, one into eroding fumes. And then for Dive Bomb, we have 10 points. We're gonna cap out the Rush of the Hunt for the cooldown. We're gonna cap out the United Assault for the increased cooldown here as well. We're gonna throw a point into Focus Hunter for the damage and mana cost there. And then we're gonna cap out the Hindering Beak Strike for all that increased area, as well as apply slow stacks to enemies. And then another point will then go into Rushing Wings for more damage there. That'll be the next one that we put into. For passives, we got eight points. We're gonna cap out the Deflect and Weave. This will convert all block chance into Glancing Blow chance, as well as give us health back now whenever we do have a Glancing Blow actually happen. And of course, this gives us 10% Glancing Blow by itself. The other four points, we're gonna put all four of them into Needle-like Precision for increased crit chance, the minion increased crit, and then of course, our minion is double dipping with the crit multi of us and for them, which is really nice there. And for the inventory, again, the best weapon you can have right now is the Dreadthorn Bow. This is going to give you bow damage, bow critical strike chance, and bow critical strike multiplier. Remember, all of those will apply to your Falcon, which is really nice. And then, of course, as a suffix, you can get minion melee and bow damage for the minion as well, which is nice. For the idols, you can get the shared crit and minion multiplier for you and your minion, which is really nice. We found one of those. They're pretty rare, though. And then for everything else, just get all the resistance you need. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at 76 when we put in the final points.
Alright travelers, we are now level 76, which means it's time to put in the final points into our skills and then some more passive points. At this point, you do want to cap out all of your resists. We are on the level 90 timelines working towards empowered. For other defenses, try and get your endurance up to 60% as well as getting to 100% critical strike avoidance. And again, we will be stacking a lot of glancing blow on this build. We're at 20% right now, but eventually we will get that up to 100%. So we take that 35% less damage on hits. And then of course stack as much decks as you can. For skills, we got seven more points for aerial assault. We're gonna put three of them in covering fire so that the wing burst at the end of our aerial assault is going to apply three stacks of frailty to all the enemies hit. We're gonna cap out the aerial prowess, cap out the falcon's havoc, cap out the torrent of talents so that on any hit that we do or any non-crit instead of just being on crit, we have a chance to get that aerial prowess stack and then one point in wind rider so that while we're traveling, we have additional dodge rating and for every dodge that we do while traveling, we gain another stack as well. For explosive trap, the three points, we ended up putting a point into smoke traps and then of course, don't put a point into impact trigger. So if you have one there, take it out. And then the last point here, we're gonna put into design for that increased detonation area. For the falconry, we have four points. We're gonna go ahead and throw one point into hunter's spoils for that health and mana gain based on our attributes. One point into avian stanima for another falcon strike hit. And then two points in bird of prey for that kill threshold at 16%, which will be great for single targets and bosses. Smoke bomb, we have three points. We're going to go ahead and throw all three of them into Eroding Fumes for that Armor Shred stack so that all the enemies inside of your Cloud for Smoke Bomb will apply Slow as well as Armor Shred on the enemy. And then for Dive Bomb, seven more points, cap out the Rushing Wings, cap out the Devastating Dive. This will give you that 72% more damage, which is huge. Don't worry about the cooldown being long. Again, we're going to be getting that cooldown down very fast with all of our bow attacks that we do. The last two points put one in Cloak Gather to make Smoke Bomb last longer, and one point in Rapid Pursuit so that you get mana back on boss or rare hit, which is really nice with it, and turns it into kind of a mana generator for us. For passives, we got 17 more points. We're going to throw eight into Blade Dancer with eight of them in Cloak of Shadows for eight more points of dex as well as 16% Glancing Blow. The rest will all go in Falconer. We're going to throw two more in Raptor's Wings for that chance to gain Hiss hit uh, chance to gain haste on hit for us are the falcon and this will increase your falcon's melee attack speed as well then we want to put five points and finesse them so that you now have more critical strike avoidance you get health on crits that you do as well as your minion critical strike multiplier will increase based on your crit avoidance and then two points into tailwind so that we get less damage taken while moving we get move speed dodge rating and of course this will be doubled since our falcon is almost always hitting and rarely goes more than four seconds without it Above for the inventory, we did finally get a Talons of Veor. If you don't have this bow, putting on a Dreadthorn is also really good. Just keep wearing that until you find a Talons of Veor. This is going to be your best in slot weapon with legendary potential. For everything else, just get health, get minion damage, and get all the resistances that you need. And again, for the idols, get four of those shared critical strike multipliers. That'll be it for this update and for this leveling guide. Hope it works out for you guys, and as always, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.